Hi everybody, Waxfraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Minecraft Let's Play series. We're actually heading over to the ancient city right now, where I had recently hooked up another portal to a giant staircase. And we'll pop through here. This was actually all built on a live stream, and thank you guys for coming to the YouTube live streams. We've been doing a lot more of those recently, and we're gonna continue doing a lot more of them. We actually have a nice, cozy home on the outside of this cave here. If you look down, we have the ancient city and the skulk all the way at the bottom, but uh, I decided to make it a little bit safer on our way down. Popping in, we have a nice little starter house area up here, and we have a giant staircase that leads all the way to the bottom. I have one set of gates here in case the warden decides to follow us up here, because you know wooden gates are totally going to stop the warden. And here's another gate, because you know two sets of gates are going to stop the warden. But we're in the ancient city now, and you'll notice that we have our nice cozy entrance all the way down into the deep dark land. It's so dark and desolate down here, but uh, that's about to change pretty soon. We're about to start moving some villagers down here. But first, we are making a skulk farm today. We're going to be grabbing a bunch of this stuff right here. While we're down here, though, on stream, I noticed there was a couple of shriekers that I did not cover up with wool, so I think we need to make our way over there. I want to keep some of the shriekers out here because I do want to spawn the warden eventually to be able to capture it. We actually have this guy right here. Let's bridge over real fast. We covered this shrieker up too for the most part. Let's see if we can take it out without any noise. And I'm now just realizing there was a shrieker right there. Man, I really got to be careful down here. Let's bridge over here real quick. I'm going to take this guy out. Oh no, that was bad. Why did I do that? Oh, I think we reset though, so we should be all good. This is the one shrieker around here though. I'm just going to place this, place this, and I know that this is going to burn real quick, so let's just do that real fast. Let's take you out. Let's get you out of here, you out of here, you out of here. If my memory serves me correctly, there is another skeleton skull down here, and voila, there we go. Oh my god, there was a shrieker right here. How did I not see this? What is happening? How did this thing not get set off? That's insane. I'm going to take you right now. Sir, you can come with me. Thank you very much. And now we can actually go over here and open up these chests. What do we got? Ooh, some more disc fragments. And we got other side. I've been looking for this for a while. Honestly, this hoe right here is pretty OP. If we found that early game, that'd be pretty nice. And the other one. Ooh, more disc fragments and some echo shards. Not bad. I keep finding places that I've missed all the way down here. There's a shrieker all the way up top. And I see two shriekers on a tower. We'll come back here next episode to get that taken care of because I am bringing some villagers down here. And I do not want the villagers setting off those shriekers. It's nice to be able to fly all the way back up here to a cozy home, though. And it's also nice to have this hooked up to the nether highway. Everywhere that's far away from home now, we have the nether highway hooked up to, so we've been getting to and from home very quickly. And now to get that skulk farm done that we were talking about earlier, the easiest way to get this done is going to be with a skeleton farm or a zombie farm. A spider farm would work too, I guess, but all of the other tutorials that I've seen have just been using skeletons and zombies, which leads me to believe that those work a lot better. I'm trusting a lot of those technical people that play the game here, and we're back at the cozy little zombie spawner. And that was pretty lucky timing. This little guy right here is actually the perfect example of why the skeleton spawner is a little bit better. We're going to want to use a dripstone, and these regular zombies that are dropping down, these guys are great for that, but uh, with that little block that's left open, the zombies, uh, these little guys, they can make it through. Now, all of these guys right here, if they're falling on a pointed dripstone, it's going to be a little bit better. One, because uh, you're going to get all that bone meal, and two, because there's no such thing as baby skeletons. Although baby skeletons would be pretty cool if that was added into the game. Now, we don't have any skeleton XP farms that I can think of that we've found, but there is one zombie XP farm that we have found. All the way by the spiral mineshaft, we actually ran into one while we were digging the hole. This was an 11 by 11 hole, and we had actually dug out on the back left side right here. There was a zombie spawner. I'm gonna have to go all the way down to find it. I believe it's right there, but I'm gonna actually go behind the scenes and dig myself down in there. And there it is. Okay, so we're actually right on top, and I have it fully torched up, so nothing should spawn. Now, it would make it a lot easier on us just to use this, but I don't want to have to dig into the spiral mine shaft right here. And there's a possibility that there's a skeleton XP spawner up here in the mines. I am hearing some spiders, so I know there's a spider spawner down here somewhere. But if we dig up, we can get ourselves a better look at these hanging mine shafts. Been a while since we went caving, but uh, I think it's better late than never. Also, if we find some enchanted golden apples in here, that wouldn't be too bad. See you, buddy. Everywhere in here is a spot that a creeper will fall from. Exactly right there. If it can happen, then it will happen. Big on, sir. Okay, get out of here, please. And be gone. I have a lot of this lit up down here, but I do want to show you guys real quick how the Skulk Catalyst works. And that guy is holding on to some tough... That's my tough, dude. What are you doing? But I'll float down here real fast. Hopefully there's no creepers that are jumping back around here. We have a slime right here. There's a zombie right there, too. Let's, you know, get out of here. 
Whoa, okay, that was pretty... Okay, that was nuts. That was a little unexpected. I meant to get the slime right here, but uh, I guess the skulk kind of changed too. There we go. That's exactly right here. That's how the skulk farm is going to work. Basically, anytime you kill a mob right next to the skulk catalyst, it's going to turn any blocks around here into the skulk. As long as it's a deep slate or a stone-like block, it will change. I just keep climbing up here and there's just more and more. I keep climbing up this mine shaft and there's more and more to light up. This is super cool. This is a part of the 1.19 update that I never really appreciate. If I find a mine shaft early game, I kind of just come in here real quick and find a chest and make my way out as quickly as possible. Ooh, we got some diamonds over here. You be gone, and you be gone. I think we're coming up on a... Yep, this is a cave spider spawner. I believe over here we're coming up on a cave spider spawner. Let's see you later, dude. Is there uh, something stuck? Is that a skeleton right there? Okay, the cave spiders are here, and they're trying to poison us for sure. Get out of here, dude. Get out. All right, well, I mean, everything's getting stuck in here. If we can get over here a little bit faster, I'd like to be able to get a little bit of this and break that. We don't necessarily need... There we go. And be gone. I'll get you with the pickaxe, sir. Wait, is there another spider spawner right... I think this is... Oh my god, this is... Hold up, let's break this. We don't need all these cave spider spawners right next to us here right now. Let's get this out of the way. Let's break that. There we go. There are plenty of cave spider spawners around, so let's just break any of them that we see right now. This place is so cool. It'd be nice to turn actually one of these into a village, too. Revamping all the naturally generated structures is so much fun. I can't wait to get all that done. And... Ooh, we have an amethyst geode right here. I'm hearing a lot of baby zombies, but I don't know where they... Okay, there's two of them right here. This guy is stuck. See you later, dude. Sorry about it. It's like a giant open space of oak planks right here. What is happening? What is this? This is one of the biggest mine shafts that I've ever explored. Well, let me tell you, if you are in need of chains early game, you got a lot of them right here. Ooh, more diamonds. I'll take those. Thank you very much. Ooh, there's stuff above us that could drop. That's never good. Let's go up these stairs. Looks like I might have been up here to place that torch, and I do see a treasure chest all the way down here. What do we got? Some gold, some activator rails, and a name tag. Not too bad. We can buy all of our name tags now, but the more the merrier. I'm loving all these free rails right now. Getting very deep into this mine shaft here. I'm starting to run into a bunch of dead ends. I'm starting to hear some endermen too. Please no creepers be around here. Just a zombie right there. I did see a... Yep, there's a skeleton there. Get away, dude. Back off. And what do you know? We got another one. Let's get down there nice and easy. Looks like the Endermen have been having a little bit of fun down here. What do we got? Picking up a lot of rails here. It would actually be pretty cool if these mine shafts generated some more pottery shirts. More free rails. Yum, yum, yum. I keep thinking that I've lit everywhere up and I'll just take another turn and then there's a whole nother dark hallway. Like this right here. Now we're just basically in a cave. And pretty lucky right here. Golden apple. Let's go. Okay, I'll take that. Let's mine right here. Thank you. And that's why you just keep searching. We went all the way back. Where are we right now? We're just in the middle of nowhere. I am hearing quite a few ske- Oh, there he is. I was gonna say, there's a couple more, I think, that I hear, too. Ow, dude, come on. Get out- Hey, whoa, get out of here. You, sir, were not invited. Please get out of here. Thank you very much. Looks like there's another one at the end of this hallway. Almost there. What do we got? Not bad, dude. Let's take it out. I'm still hearing skeletons, though. I cannot tell which wall they're coming from, though. Like, there's an abnormal amount of skeletons. Let's just, let's dig this way a little bit. Running into a water cave. I don't think the skellies would actually be over this direction. Let's go this way. Something's gotta be down this hallway. Those skeleton noises are getting a tad bit louder. Just been kind of going at it from every angle that I possibly can. Okay, I'm almost certain that this is a skeleton spawner because there's way too many skeleton noises. Okay, hold up. Okay, that's, yep, that's, that's definitely a spawner right there. Let's break this, and, ouch, and you be gone. You be gone. You be gone. A lot of skeletons to have to be gone. I'll see you all later, buddies. Broke the, oh my god. Okay, see ya, no, see ya. Oh, they're in a battle with each other. This is great. Okay, you guys just fight each other and I will just continue going this way a tad bit. I don't really hear that many more skeletons. I'm gonna light this up as quickly as I can, and I think they actually might be just around this corner. Actually, they might have all just climbed up here, so we might be in the clear. Let's put a torch up there. We can actually block this off just a little bit. And we have ourselves a skeleton spawner. Let's go! What do we have in the chest? Another name tag. Another other- what? We found two other sites in one episode. If a third one rolls around, that'd be crazy. Now, this is actually not going to be like the other skeleton spawner where we dig this out four ways on each side and put some water down so that they can go into a water elevator and fall down for me to just hack away at them for some XP. 
on this one they're all going to spawn and the water is going to bring them all to a specific center location where they're going to fall probably close to some bedrock and so for efficiency we're going to actually just continue taking out that four by four in each direction we'll get this place all nice and cleaned up taking out the ceiling and i can still hear some skeletons above me let's close this exposed wall up right here with some cobblestone Close this up right here, and then we should be able to just move down three more blocks. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. That should leave one exposed block in the middle. Let's see if we go right down. I wonder how far that goes. Ooh, we got some surprise diamonds. Let's go. So I can see the bedrock from right here, which isn't necessarily the best thing because we want these skeletons to get some critical damage all the way down here. So what we'll do is we'll actually take away these and we'll put some blocks up to get the water up one more and we're going to do the classic water elevator to get the skeletons up just a little bit higher. So if I hook this up right, all of these skeletons should drop down after they spawn up into this water column that is not necessarily a column yet because I haven't put the kelp there. But all the skeletons will get raised up over here and then drop down what will be their imminent death. We've got an open space here. This is where they're all going to fall into. So right now we're looking at about a 20 block drop. It could have gone a little bit less, but I just wanted to play it a little bit safe. So in order to get the zombies to fall down this hole, let's take out all of the kelp right here so that this bubble column can start. Smack that bottom kelp and everything should start rushing. Let's take this torch out and then we will tower ourselves up out of here. Let's create a barrier here so I don't accidentally fall out. And for the moment of truth, let's take out that torch, that torch, that guy, and that guy. Okay, the skeletons have already started spawning. All right, and we have a completely dark cube. Let's back up and close that off. Now, I don't have an official way to get in and out right now, so we have a little bit of a ladder system. I want to see if I can beat the skeletons down there. I want to see it turn to skulk. I just heard one fall right then and there. And yo, I just heard one fall again. Are we going to get any skulk here? And another one fell. Hmm, no skulk yet. That's kind of strange. I wonder if the slabs were messing it up. Let's take these out. Whoa, nothing yet. Dang, this, the sound that the skulk catalyst makes is nuts. Let's try moving the catalyst back just a block or two. Whoa, there. Okay, still nothing. What's going on here? Move the dripstone down by one block. Let's see if that helps out at all. And I didn't see anything right there. What is... Okay, and nothing again. What is going on? So I think I figured it out. The dripstone was actually the thing that was causing the problem. I thought the dripstone was the thing that was going to increase the efficiency of this, but there you go. The dripstone was the one thing that was actually blocking it. So this farm actually does work. This is perfect. I think in order to get an extra space right here, maybe... Okay, actually, we're gonna have to bring the wall back too. Did you see that? Okay, we're gonna have to bring a lot of this deep slate back, maybe about three, four blocks. Okay, this is awesome. I cannot believe we have a working skulk farm. It's about time, dude. Can always get a little bit of XP from the skulk, but for now, let's get this replaced. Gonna pick all this up before the next guy drops down. I think I'm gonna make a 15 by 15 room. This skulk catalyst right here can actually have an 8 block radius of detection. Ooh, okay, it looks like it works up here too, and wow, we really need to bring the walls back still. This is actually going to open up the tunnel that we had built on stream. Starting off, I lined up every three spaces with some polished basalt with some regular basalt on the corners. I wanted an easier way to get to this skulk farm, so we have a long hallway that actually goes all the way up to that mossy pathway. Takes a second to get up here, but uh, if we just take a little bit of a right on that mossy pathway, we can get over here in no time. We gotta hop back down, though. We gotta complete that hallway. Also, I'd like to make a stone generator. Take some chiseled, polished black stone. We'll throw it along the edges here, and then I think behind them we'll throw a glowstone. That'll actually bring a little bit of nice light to this hallway. To bring a little color on the hallway, let's actually just make the floor entirely out of moss. We'll just bone meal our way all the way back down to the Skulk Farm. There is some lava that's about to poke through, but luckily the moss is not burning. Let's take that down. Let's break the end of the hallway here. Okay, so now we're at the Skulk Farm, and we have a lot of deep slate to keep replacing this Skulk with, but I don't want to keep on using the deep slate. I'd rather honestly just use a stone generator. By the way, it would be amazing if there was a deep slate generator. So we're going to continue to clear out the walls here so they stop turning into skulk from this farm, but I think off to the left side, we'll actually make a little bit of a hole to put this generator. First things first, you're going to want a double chest. Let's get four hoppers hooked up to that. We're going to get some stairs that are facing the hoppers. Once all the walls are up, make sure you have a sign right there so that you can waterlog all of these stairs and make sure that nothing runs out. You don't have to, but I'm just going to waterlog all of them. Add one more layer of regular blocks. Then just make sure to close it off before you put a lava bucket in the middle here. Now that's actually just turning everything to stone here like that, and you can actually AFK and go four blocks like this until it all turns back into stone. 
You might have to get past the sound of the lava and the water getting into contact here because it's a lot of hissing, but uh, if you can move past that, then you're going to be just fine. After about a minute, let's see, what do we have on the side here? And we already have more than a stack. That's crazy. And it's just this nice little compact setup here. You have the lava up top, you got the water down below, and you got the little chest in the back. Now let's just make this place look a little bit nicer. Let's clear out the rest of these walls. I'm thinking we need to make a perimeter here. Let's actually go one, two, three, four, five, six blocks to the edge, and then we'll go on the seventh block. Let's go one down. Well, looks like I'm exposing the original ladder that I took into here. All good things must come to an end. We now have a bubble column. Finish up the corner here. The coolest thing about the skulk spreading is that it actually gets stopped by these slabs. Let's clear this up real quick. Let's take some stone and get to replacing over here. We finally don't have to use any of the deep slate. There we go. It should be. Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere past the slabs. And the stone is getting taken over. This is perfect. Sorry, skeletons, but this is, uh, this is the way it has to be. So what I did was actually move the cobblestone generator all the way up at the top. I decided to cover it up with some deep slate tile walls too, and we moved it all the way to the back. And it looks like some shriekers are actually starting to spawn now, which is not going to be good. Oh my god, there's, more, there's two of them. Oh, actually there's three. This is, oh my god. Under the frog light, we're having a little bit of an issue catching some of these materials, so I think we're going to have to catch a little bit of a hopper system right down here. Of course, there is a shrieker under here where I'm trying to put the hoppers. Let's get you out. Dude, these things are spawning so much. There's more sensors already. One just spawned right before our eyes. I am learning very quickly that this is a very loud farm. We'll start with a double chest. We'll line up some hoppers going all the way to the end. We're going to have to take out this frog light for a second, get a little dangerous, and we'll put that there. Let's go up here. Got that glass back in and put a stone piece right there. We're good to go. I just want to see if this works, and okay, it doesn't look like there's any items right there. Is the chest getting filled up? And it is. This is perfect. What I'll do is cover this up right here. It's starting to get pretty dark in here, so I think the quartz on the floor in between some of this deep slate and probably on the walls is going to be the best move. This is looking nice and smooth already. I think what will look even smoother is actually just in the corner putting some crimson stem, and I think we might leave it unstripped. That's, ooh, that's nice. And if these went from the ceiling all the way over to the middle of the farm, actually, let's get the Hyphae over here. It's kind of a weird name for a block, the Crimson Hyphae. That's looking clean. I love the contrast of these colors. Back to mindlessly placing blocks. Wow, it's already looking so much brighter in here. Let's replace these four blocks right here with some ochre frog lights so it just looks a little bit nicer. The walls are built up, and we got to start thinking about the scaffolding that is in the way of getting the ceiling done. I have, as you can see, the glass tube kind of risen all the way up here as high as I can go. I might bring it up a couple more blocks. Kind of funny, we have the pyramid effect going again in back-to-back -back episodes. We get the glass replaced up in here, so there shouldn't be anything able to fall out. The pyramid effect, I don't think, is able to go any further. I have the water tunnel that's going right above that deep slate block. So if I were to go up to the stone generator here and I break this block, one block right here, that's actually where the skeleton farm is. And if I break that, it'll just open up a whole can of worms. So that is going to be the limit for our pyramid effect here. I think in the corners, actually, let's just use some glowstone and then maybe we'll tear us down with some blackstone and some deep slate. The skeletons live in the darkness and then they come all the way over here to a nice bright surprise. I'm going to take this layer of deep slate out and then let's get it replaced. We'll do chiseled polished blackstone on every other block and then let's see chiseled deep slate right here. Ooh, that's not looking too bad and I fell. I'm noticing now that these chiseled blocks are not really directional. Like if I place it like this, it's going to face that way. And if I place it like this, it's just still going to face that way. Same with the blackstone blocks too. I guess it doesn't really matter though too much. It's still pretty cool the way they're textured. We have an unlimited amount of glowstone, so I'm probably just going to repeat this pattern up here on the ceiling. Okay, actually I lied, we have some glowstone still up there, but now we have some hanging azalea plants, and we use the blue ice and the packed ice alternating all the way down. We'll finish this off with a chain and an end rod right there. Hop on the ground here, and the ceiling is actually starting to take some of the colors of the sky, which is kind of nice because we're all the way down here at bedrock. We'll line up the last row with some hoppers over here. And on the wall right here, we're using some red nether brick and some end stone alternating, but with the quartz stairs back behind, just to give the crimson stem a break, we're going to use some warp stem back there, but sideways. I also thought that only end rods over here would look cool, but we're going to alternate with some lightning rods as well. And even with half the end rods, it's still going to be just as lit up. On those corner frog lights, let's go ahead and put some torch flowers in there. 
I've been experimenting on the floor a little bit. I've been trying to use a lot of reflective blocks like this blue ice and the gold pressure plates. The quartz on the wall is super reflective as well as you can see the end rod is reflecting. The gilded black stone is a little bit shiny and I thought it would be kind of cool to add all of these diamond ore blocks that we have been digging up. We actually found 47 of them. Now that right there is that's not looking too bad. And I know they're called heavy-weighted pressure plates, but I'm just going to call them the iron pressure plates because that's really what they are. If we get a higher angle over here, ooh, this is looking good. We have like a little throne that's leading up over into the stone generator. I'm loving the reflective blocks on the floor and all of these end rods on the ceiling. We can run up into our throne and go grab as much stone as we possibly can. I also had an idea that we could use to connect the tunnel to this giant opening that we made here. Let's actually use some crimson stem and go all the way down. Bring a little bit more color to this mossy hallway. Next, I was thinking we could actually hide some redstone blocks in between the crimson stems. We could put some powered rails on top and use all of these rails that we had found in the mine shafts. Now we can just lazily use a minecart to get back and forth. I actually have one right here. See you later, buddy. It's not like I was going to use you right now. And I actually thought this hallway was finished with the decorations. I just keep thinking of new things to put on the sides here. We're going to use some deep slate brick walls. Then we're going to alternate some lime candles and some white candles. We'll light all these up and we have an... Oh my god! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. Yeah, light these up. We have a nice warm ambient vibe. Hopefully there's no fire that starts. Beautiful. I love having rail systems that take you to the farm. Oh my god, we've collected four stacks now of the Skulk sensors. Get some barrels hooked up right here so that we can actually just store some of this stuff. We don't have to have it right on the farm anymore. These middle sections of quartz are looking a little bit less bright than the ice counterparts. So let's actually put some end rods on the sides here and hook them up with some chains. That, ooh, that's gonna be great. I take a little bit of scaffolding, but we can do that all the way around. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. Can't forget the bop, boom, bang, and bing. Actually, on second of thought, again, we should replace some end rods. Every other one will alternate with some lightning rods. Every time I turn around, there's like 20 more sensors behind me, dude. These guys are so loud. The final chain has been placed. Let's see if we can go down and... Ooh, that... See, that adds so much light. The ceiling is so much more vibrant. There's a few more minor decorations that I'd like to add, starting with these iron gates. Ooh, let's get that clay pot out of there. Let's get these iron gates right here. And next, I was thinking along these hoppers on every other one. Let's put a chain down. We'll put a plant down. And then we're also going to alternate between some ferns and some cactuses. There's not that many plants that reach all the way to the chain. Fern is one of them and cactus is one of them. You can also use azalea. I know bamboo is really good for that as well. Again, we have a bunch of sensors here. And if you look right here, we actually have one dude. I think he has some feather falling boots on because there's no way he could have survived that fall. Luckily, with one little swipe, he's gone. And that just created two sensors alone right there, so at least if they fall and we swipe at them, it still does create some skulk. I think we did a pretty good job of making this build feel like it's not all the way down at Bedrock. It's starting to feel like a nice and cozy home down here. Small detail missed right here. Looks like there's two blocks I almost completely forgot to put in. Let's put you right there and you right there. I also have an idea to make this part of the quartz ceiling a little bit less smooth looking. And if we replace these with these smooth quartz stairs, that actually starts to look a lot more textured. I do a lot of detailing already with buttons, trapdoors, all of the wooden blocks, but I need to get a little bit better at detailing with slabs and stairs themselves. And with the stairs, you can actually make some cool designs in the ceiling just like this. It might be fun to use some dripstone here. We were going to use it initially on this farm, but if we have it hanging from the ceiling, we can give it a use. Let's put these sensors back here. Actually, I want to see how many bones we've been collecting so far. Oh my god, we have so many down here. Now that's just great, and you know what we could do? Let's get all of the loot from the ancient city and bring it on down here. This will give me the opportunity to show you guys what we did on the latest YouTube stream. Head up the bubble elevator real fast, and before you know it, you end up in the house, and wait a second, hold up, I actually do have two oak signs we can just put here right now for the bed ledge. And this is the first floor interior of our starter house. We had actually built this over about a three and a half hour long YouTube stream. Thanks for showing up if you did. We'll fly out here a little bit of a ways and give you guys a better look. We just built a brand new starter house floating here in the ocean. Looks the same from both sides. We're going to come over here on Dog Island. And don't, guys, we will, we will get a home for these dogs. I do promise that. But I love this house. It's nice and cozy. It doesn't really serve any purpose other than to house the entrance to the Skulk Farm. Tried to make it look as detailed as possible, though, in case any villagers do decide to move in here. But there is a second floor they can actually get up to and an attic all the way up top. Got some nice views of the nether portal from here. And the back side over here is the exact same, but it connects up to this moss pathway that we have built a while back. 
I guess it's not really a floating house if I have these jungle log stilts on the front porch and the back porch. I'm looking at the side of the house here. I could probably put some more jungle logs here as well. Let's fly home real fast. Let's grab all of the ancient city loot and those jungle logs. I'll take all of you guys right here, and I believe the shulker box with everything from the ancient city is right here. Yep, let's take it down to the basement. Before we head back down, let's go right here, and I think we can line ourselves up right to this guy. We can bring the jungle log up this way. Go over one block and get one right next to it. Get the cluster on the top to stay consistent, and then we'll go all the way down and strip this log. And, alright, that's not too bad. Now we have the front and back matching the sides of the house. It doesn't look like it's really floating anymore, and it does look like it's more structured. Now we can head back down and finally unload this light blue shulker box. So, what do we have? We do have a lot of skulk. Oh, echo shards. I need to actually put a place here for them. What I'm gonna do is actually put the skulk catalyst right here, because the skulk itself, I'm gonna take upstairs to the sea level, because I'm gonna use that for building. Get all of the rest of these put away here. We have so many Skulk sensors now, and I believe we have enough music disc fragments to make this disc finally. Yes, we do. We can put it right next to our other other side. I also realized I don't really have a use for these Echo Shards because I'm playing in hardcore mode, and uh, yeah, so just there's absolutely no use for them. Unless there is a use for them, and I'm just not thinking of it, please let me know in the comments below if I'm just not thinking of it. On the corners, I think it'd be cool if we use some large amethyst buds. Instead of the clusters, we're always using the clusters, so we gotta give the large amethyst buds a little bit of love. Let's sprinkle these all over the entrance as well. And every other block around the Skulk Farm actually wouldn't hurt as well. And there we have it, the last one placed down. We might be good except for up here in our little stone generator throne. Let's get some on the sides like that. We'll get one right here, here, and there. As well as the corners of our ice square up at the top of the ceiling. And I think we have ourselves a nice Skulk XP farm. Guys, we did it. Thank you all so much for watching. This build was super fun to make. I spent a, quite a few hours on the Twitch streams and the YouTube streams making all of this. And I really do appreciate you guys spending the time with me on the live streams. It really does mean a lot. I'm gonna get the last four torch flowers up here just for a tad bit more decoration. And boom, that is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate y'all. Thank you to all the new YouTube members, all of the Twitch subscribers, and the Patreon supporters. All of the links for the socials are going to be in the description of the video down below. I'll say it again, take care of yourselves, do something nice for somebody. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!